Have you ever wondered about the uproarious adventures of a mismatched crew aboard a World War II submarine? Well, look no further than Operation Petticoat. This 1959 film offers a delightful blend of humor, surprises, and heartfelt moments that will keep you hooked till the very end. In this classic movie, you'll witness a group of sailors led by Lieutenant Commander Sherman, who find themselves on a quirky journey filled with unexpected twists and turns. From painting their submarine paint to navigating through perilous waters, their escapades will leave you in stitches. But the fun doesn't stop there. Operation Petticoat packs a punch with its mix of funny, shocking, and even touching moments. So, grab your popcorn and settle in because there's a lot more in store for you. Now, here's a question for you out of the many roles in this movie. Which one was your favorite? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We can't wait to hear from you and discover your most cherished memories or personal experiences related to this timeless classic. Keep watching this video for more fascinating facts and anecdotes about Operation Petticoat. A light-hearted military farce, Operation Petticoat, directed by Blake Edwards, follows a naval submarine commander, portrayed by Cary Grant, who takes charge of a rundown sub and an eclectic crew, with the most unruly member being the supply officer, Lieutenant Holden, played by Tony Curtis. The film transforms the serious backdrop of war into a witty and entertaining narrative, a characteristic style employed by Edwards in other military comedies like Operation Madball and What Did You Do in the War, Daddy? Grant and Curtis deliver commendable performances, showcasing their acting prowess. Grant's familiarity in classics like Arsenic and Old Lace and North by Northwest adds a touch of predictability yet undeniable charm. Tony Curtis, known for his roles in Houdinia and Some Like It Hot, shines in one of his finer performances, contributing to the movie's overall appeal. The supporting cast, while not specifically notable, maintains a good standard of acting. The exception lies in certain dialogues about women, which occasionally verge on cliché war movie tropes. The camera work and musical score complement the film's style seamlessly, while Morris Richland's writing, coupled with Blake Edwards' direction, results in a well-executed production. The absurd yet entertaining scenarios concocted by the writers for a wartime setting contribute to the film's satirical nature. While not an exceptional masterpiece, Operation Petticoat stands out as a higher quality, noteworthy production that manages to be appealing, satirical, and splendid. It is a movie worth watching for its clever performances, humor, and overall well-crafted execution, even if it may not be deemed essential. Bob Hope always regretted turning down the opportunity to be a part of the movie. Two of the boats featured in the film, including the USS Archerfish and the USS Wren, had significant roles in the Pacific Theater during World War II. Operation Petticoat follows the crew's journey to restore the submarine's operational status, mirroring real-life experiences of Tony Curtis, who served on a submarine repair ship during the war. It's speculated that Curtis' enlistment was influenced by a film starring Cary Grant. Commander Sherman faced a daunting task, expressing a willingness to strike a deal with the devil to relocate a submarine back to duty. This moment sets the tone for the challenges ahead in the narrative. In a noteworthy connection outside the movie, Gavin McLeod, a cast member of Operation Petticoat, crossed paths with Marion Ross during a stage play of the film. This encounter laid the groundwork for their later collaboration on The Love Boat, where Ross assumed the recurring role of McLeod's on-screen wife. Adding a familial touch to the tale, Lieutenant Barbara Duran, the romantic interest of Tony Curtis' character found a different portrayal in the 1977 television series remake. In this version, Curtis' own daughter, Jamie Lee Curtis, stepped into the role originally brought to life by Dina Merrill. These interwoven connections and behind-the-scenes anecdotes add layers to the narrative, giving viewers a glimpse into the intricate relationships formed during and after the making of Operation Petticoat. In a bygone era of naval tradition, Enlisted sailors faced an interesting quirk their toilets were known as the head. This peculiar term harks back to the days of sailing ships, where the enlisted sailor's toilet comprised a series of holes perched over the bow, referred to as the head of the ship. This strategic placement ensured that offensive odors were whisked away by the constant wind blowing from the aft, keeping the ship's atmosphere tolerable. Meanwhile, officers enjoyed a more discreet location for their facilities near the stern, within the quarter gallery, hanging over the water on either side. The camaraderie behind the scenes of Operation Petticoat extended beyond its 1959 release. Notably, Tony Curtis and Arthur O'Connell shared the screen once again in The Great Race, showcasing a continued collaboration beyond their initial voyage in Operation Petticoat. Intriguingly, Cary Grant, a central figure in the film, had a connection beyond the silver screen. 
His previous marriage tied him to Woolworth heiress Barbara Hutton, who happened to be Dina Merrill's cousin. This real-life connection added an extra layer to the dynamics of the cast. These behind-the-scenes details provide a glimpse into the unique elements that shaped Operation Petticoat, offering a blend of historical naval quirks and personal connections among its cast. The comment about victims of Sherman's march to the Sea Lynx Lieutenant CMDR. Sherman's actions to Union General William Tecumseh Sherman's Savannah campaign during the American Civil War, known for its devastation. Cary Grant sought to work with Tony Curtis due to the latter's on-screen charisma, reminiscent of Grant's younger self. Grant was disheartened by Operation Musketeer's failure, an Anglo-French attempt to regain the Suez Canal after its seizure by the NASA regime, leading to Israel's invasion of the Sinai Peninsula. Grant maintained a close relationship with Curtis Postfilm. Did you know that Cary Grant and Dick Sargent worked together in a couple of movies? After their collaboration in a film about Navy operations, they teamed up again in another movie in 1962. Notably, Tony Curtis, inspired by his admiration for Cary Grant in a film about a submarine mission, joined the Navy during World War II. Later, he acted alongside Grant in a movie where they played naval officers on a submarine. It's interesting to note that Operation Petticoat wasn't the first time Cary Grant played a submarine commander. He took on a similar role in another movie back in 1943. This journey through cinema shows how actors with shared military experiences can come together to tell compelling stories. The movie serves as a unique link between Grant Curtis and the exploration of submarine warfare during World War II, highlighting the challenges and camaraderie of that era. In summary, the film serves as an intersection of shared experiences, bringing together actors who had served in the military and portraying Grant's second venture as a submarine commander. It's a testament to the bond formed through their service and their ability to translate those experiences onto the screen. Taking place in World War II, this classic movie draws inspiration from real events of the time, blending them seamlessly into its story. The USS Sea Lion's dramatic sinking and the comical toilet paper shortage incidents playfully acknowledge the historical backdrop, creating a charming mix of reality and fiction. One scene, where a truck mysteriously vanishes underwater, mirrors a true event from 1944 when a misplaced torpedo caused unexpected chaos. By cleverly incorporating these real incidents, the movie not only adds authenticity, but also gives viewers a fun peek into the quirks and challenges of wartime life. In Operation Petticoat, Tony Curtis's portrayal of Nicholas Holden adds an interesting layer to the story. His character, reminiscent of Neil Caffrey from White Collar, grabs the audience's attention. The smooth and charismatic qualities he brings to the screen create an engaging dynamic that enhances the viewer's enjoyment. To sum up, Operation Petticoat successfully blends historical accuracy with humor and charm, offering an enjoyable cinematic experience. Tony Curtis's performance as Nicholas Holden brings a modern touch to the World War II setting, making the film a timeless and entertaining piece for audiences. This delightful mix of history and humor showcases the creativity and wit in storytelling, leaving a lasting impression on those who appreciate a well-crafted narrative. Three members of the cast reunited with Gavin McLeod on his show, The Love Boat. Dick Sargent and Dina Merrill appeared once, while Marion Ross guest starred as five different characters and later became a regular cast member. Additionally, three regular cast members from Operation Petticoat appeared on The Love Boat, John Aston and Richard Gilliland were cut after the first season, and Melinda Nod appeared after the show's season two cancellation. The map on the wall in Captain Henderson's office depicts a divided Germany. Terry Grant, fearful that Diane Cannon would take their daughter Jennifer to New York, and Europe filed for joint custody in 1971. When the judge ruled in his favor, Grant was jubilant. He sold the rights to his last films with Universal for over $2 million, including Operation Petticoat, The Grass is Greener, that touch of mink and charade. He had no further involvement in the movie business and invested in property development in southern Spain and Ireland. In a behind-the-scenes twist, the lead actor Tony Curtis pushed for Cary Grant to star alongside him in the film. Despite offers from Universal for other actors, Curtis stood his ground, securing Grant for the role. During filming, a ship's whole number was partially visible, hinting at the USS Peregrine's presence in the movie. Most scenes were shot in Key West, where the Peregrine was stationed. Additionally, a memorable sinking scene from Operation Petticoat was reused in another production, The Captain's Mission, featuring Gavin McLeod in both films. During the filming of the comedic classic Operation Petticoat, Cary Grant's growing fascination with therapeutic LSD treatments became undeniable. 
In the midst of shooting, Grant, known for his usually reserved interviews, surprised reporters Joe Hyams and Lionel Crane. Grant, unusually relaxed, openly shared his extraordinary experiences with LSD. He spoke of a desperate desire to alter his character, seeking a reunion with Betsy Drake, his partner at the time. Tony Curtis, who played a Playboy character in the film, drew inspiration from Cary Grant's voice in Some Like It Hot, a Billy Wilder-directed comedy released nine months prior. Curtis, having idolized Grant as a teenager, intended this as a homage. Ironically, Curtis found himself acting alongside his hero in Operation Petticoat. Whether Grant was aware of the parody during filming and how he reacted to Curtis remain unknown. The captain's journal in the movie chronicles the events aboard the Sea Tiger from December 10, 1941 to January 3, 1942.